Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating nature-inspired watercolours in my studio, which are easy for you to do too. I share all my paintings with you on YouTube and on our website, dianeanton.com, you can find free downloadable sketches for all the videos to help you make the most of your painting journey. And if you'd like a little bit more, we also have channel memberships with loads of perks for you to enjoy. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Hi everyone, Diane here, welcome to my studio. This month I'm going to be painting a different flower every day for my members daily challenge, which all our members can take part in. The journal or sketchbook I'm using is a Viviva Square book, which is filled with paper, which is a bit like cardi paper. It's kind of rough. And I put a link in the description below uh, if you want to get one of these. And if you go to the Viviva page and put um, Diane Anton in at the checkout, you get an extra 10% off. So that's quite a good deal. Um, not everyone will like this paper though, so I do use other books as well. For example, this Canson XL Multimedia, whatever you call it, um, book, which comes in this size as well. This is a string and space one as well. This is smoother and that's kind of nice as well. I quite like that. Have a completely different effect for your paintings than what you have with, with this kind of rough paper, which is always interesting. You never know what's gonna happen with this kind of paper. It's very absorbent. Don't forget to go to our website as well and sign up there for our newsletter, um, which gives you each week, that gives you lots of information about things that you might want to um, follow up on. Um, okay, so in this sketchbook, we've started with blue bonnets from Texas. Then I've got the Protea from South Africa and Edelweiss from Austria. And then today we're going to be painting the kangaroo paw from Australia. I'm going to start off by drawing it and then painting it in a simple botanical style with some line work at the end. So let's get started. But of course, I have never ever seen a kangaroo's paw either on a kangaroo or on a plant. So excuse me if I am just a um, little bit kind of, um, uh, what's the word? Um, lost for words kind of thing. Um, as I attempt to uh, to draw this, I'm using a drawing, a botanical drawing, which I have found on um, Wikipedia, that tells me that the um, Australian um, kangaroo paw is so called because the flowering stem resembles a... Um, uh, guess what, a kangaroo's paw. Um, I can't see that myself, but then that's probably because I haven't got the faintest idea what a kangaroo's paw looks like. Anyway, so I'm just copying this drawing here. I don't have an example of a kangaroo's paw plant to work from, so I'm having to do it like this. And that's okay though, because I know, I mean, that's what most people do, isn't it? When when we have these challenges, um, we have to go and look it up. So we look it up in online because it's not always easy to find books um, with these things in. I, I Yesterday I was looking for um, a, a drawing of Edelweiss. I thought I, I won't look on internet because it seems to be a bit confused about what they really look like. Um, I will look in, I've got lots of gardening books. No, 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 no chance. No chance of finding anything remotely resembling a, um, um, a, um, sorry, I'm just thinking here. I can see that little bit looks a bit like a, a claw or a paw. Um, Edelweiss, that's the word I was looking for, Edelweiss. I couldn't find anything remotely resembling Edelweiss. So I gave up and I went online and found what I could. I was um, saying to Tamsin this morning how wonderful everybody's paintings are that they're doing in response to this challenge. And it's, it's 
And she said, oh, you must mention that on the video. And so I'm mentioning it. They're wonderful. I've seen some absolutely beautiful pieces of work that you're all doing. And um, yeah, that's why I'm prompted to share my um, version every day, if I possibly can. I'll try to do my best to, to do that. These It says on Wikipedia that the leaves go to a steep apex, apex, which I think means that they're quite pointed. So there we are, that's the drawing. And I think I'll use my little tin of VH Aquarelle paints, which is a, whoops, sorry about that, um, specially chosen uh, selection of paints here to be able to paint flowers with. And um, I put that together with the help of Victoria Hilbrecht from from she makes these paints herself it's all her own work so let's see what can we do we need to use a green like this for the um, top and then it goes to bright red so I'm going to keep it simple and I think this green pretty much matches what I've got on my Amazon um, not Amazon um, Wikipedia page here and uh, oh yes I was going to show you actually while I'm doing this this would be useful I'm working from my iPad of course um this, no not this this is the one I used before um Meaden palettes yes this one is is great they they just sent me another one though a new one um which is this one this is the one I've been using which is super. And this one they've just sent, which Tamsin said that looks like that's meant for sushi. And it possibly is. It's the same sort of size as this one. All right. Um, about eight by six or something like that. And But it's divided into three sections. So it's very good for mixing colour in. So I'm going to put that there. And while I'm at it, I will also show you a couple of other things that they sent me. They sent me um, this little tin, which is obviously for paints. 14 um, half pans. You can squeeze paints into those half pans from your tubes if you have tubes, or you can buy half pans and just insert them. But it's a nice, strong, sturdy little tin with a ring on the back for your thumb. And you can um, easily take that with you when you're painting out of doors. Or alternatively, though, and it's got a nice pattern on the top. I was thinking you could get labels with your own name on there, couldn't you? Um, sorry about this plaster on my finger. I cut myself cooking yesterday. Um, and then they sent me this one also, which is bigger. Um, it has 13 on each side, so I think it's got 26. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, yes. 26 possible colours there. Same thing, you can put your brush in the middle, like that, just fits. And you can use these areas here for mixing paint on. And again, it's got a ring on the other side, so you can hold it. So if you're outside painting, um, you don't necessarily need to drop it. And the other thing they sent me was these little samples, I think. They're like samples of paper. Um, they're cold press. They come in a pack of um, five, five of these. Each one has 10 little sheets in it. And they're really quite sweet. I know you can always cut a piece of paper up into smaller bits, but if you wanted to make, I was thinking for Christmas next year, nice gift tags, you could either paint over the whole thing or else fold them in half and make those nice gift tags. So that's something to remember that we can have um, any time of the year really. It doesn't have to be for Christmas, does it? A little card to put in with their present if you send something to somebody. Um, it's nicely cut, obviously, because it's professionally done. Anyway, so there we are. Um, back to the kangaroo paw, I think. Now it's the paint these um, these uh, doodars here, so we'll just keep going and move my water a bit closer so I'm not stretching all the time. 
Um, yes, and so I need a little bit more of a darker green. So this one is darker. So I'm going to put it back there. You can't see that. It's one of those days, isn't it? Everything I'm doing, I'm doing wrong. Okay, so that's slightly darker. So we'll just drop a little bit of that in, in places. And because I distracted myself with talking about other things, we've it's dried off a little bit, but it doesn't really matter. So we'll just, all of these flowers, they, this particular colorway is green on the ends, and then down here, it's going to be red, but we'll, we'll paint these bits first. And apparently when they open, the inside is creamy colored, um, and yellow. So anyway, we'll, we don't, we're not aiming for botanical accuracy here, are we? So, but that'll do for the creamy color. And then up here, we'll do this creamy too. Quite fun to paint something you've never painted before. And then we need some red. So we've got this bright red here. And the beauty of this separated pan is that you can keep your reds and your greens separate. And um, so we've got this color red, which is pretty close. And then we've got this color red, which is darker. So that'll do nicely for the shadow here. So we pick up this one first, and then we're just going to put the bases of these flowers. And it doesn't matter if it runs a little bit. And the stem here too is all red. And we can add a little bit of darker red as, as we go down if you want. Mix and mingle a little bit. And we sort of have a kind of a bit of a rounded kind of cup thing going on there. And now we can do the leaves, and I believe they are roughly the same color. So we'll just paint some nice. Oh, I'm using this is a draw well brush. Um, it's not one of my set. I just picked this one up. Sorry, I just picked it up. I wasn't wasn't really thinking about brushes. I just picked it up. It's raining again. Okay, so there we are, that's that one. And now we'll just do the next one. We'll start at the top with a little bit darker green because it's a little bit further away. And we'll come to the lighter. We've had more rain here this last month. February is one of the wettest Februarys ever. And this month looks like it's going to be similar. And yesterday, in the south of France, they had a month and a half's worth of rain in one day. And there were lots of accidents, and they had a mini tornado, and lots of car accidents, and a few people were killed. Um, just terrible. You don't expect that. Well, obviously you don't, because if that was a um, month and a half's worth of rain in one day, you know, normally, they're not having anything like that amount of rain. Terrible. I'll do these leaves as well while I've got the green on my brush. Well, this is the kind of plant that you might feel tempted to um, outline in pen. If you, um, if you weren't completely convinced about the, the power of your painting, that it doesn't have to be powerful and pungent, does it? You can just do delicate things to just see how it turns out, don't you, really? This one in the photo that I'm looking at is also red. Um, 
and then we could find a bit more green for this one behind. <clears throat> and um, right, so yeah, I don't know. Maybe I might want to. This has got sort of yellow things coming out the end of it here and kind of yellow underneath. This paper in this um, this sketchbook is interesting and it doesn't react at all like um, other paper that I've used. So this is going to be a completely different effect. It soaks up the paint quite, quite strongly. I'm just mixing this red with the green to give me a sort of mauve because I kind of want to give this a little bit more shadow here and there perhaps. And as I get to this point, I'm sort of thinking, will I, uh, do I want to, um, uh, what's the word, um, come in with line work. And I'm trying to decide whether or not to do that based on the fact, kind of, well, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not quite sure. I could do because I used pencil on this one. Um, it's not as if this is, you know, in any way restricted um, by, oh, it's all got to be pure watercolour or anything like that. I want to put a few dots around. Um, let me think. I think I'm going to dry it and uh, see what it looks like when it's dry. Okay, so that's dry and I think I'm going to just um, use my sepia, Winsor & Newton sepia pen and I'm going to outline basically these bracts. Just to give them a little bit more uh, Shape. It's not absolutely necessary to do this, of course, but um, no harm in it. Sometimes the lines are more pleasing to the eye, I don't know quite why. And I personally quite like the process, quite enjoy doing the outlining. So, and down here we've got these kind of, I'm not quite sure exactly what these look like, they're kind of furry things. Apparently the, the plant is actually, each flower is, is covered with tiny hairs, but I'm not quite sure I can manage to, to paint that or draw that. Yeah, with the, with the um, 
the pen, you can definitely smooth off the, um, out, the contours, the outlines and so on and give more shape. So, you know, some of us, I'm, I, I'm not a botanical artist, I'm much more slap happy um, to, uh, to, to, do, to do that. But if you can't do it with paint, then you can definitely have a go with, with pen at giving it more, um, I shouldn't say quoi. Sometimes, you know, it's a good idea to do more than one painting at a time. So simultaneously do, do two, one on a scrap piece of paper, perhaps, or on a different pad or in a different sketchbook. Um, because quite often, by the time you get towards the end of what you're doing, you're beginning to get into the flow. And you think to yourself, oh, if I could have been in in the flow right from the beginning, this would have turned out better. I think that is a good, a good uh, idea sometimes to, to do that. Sometimes when I'm doing a video, I will um, draw something or paint something before I start recording just to achieve that state, the flow state. And then when I start, by the time I start, I'm in the right frame of mind, if you know what I mean. Of course, if you're a really skilled artist, you probably don't need, I don't know. I don't know whether everybody needs to do that or not. I don't think it can do any harm though to do two of the same subject, what do you think? It's only two pieces of paper, after all. There we are. So that's that. Now, when you look at that, now it's got the lines on it, you can see the shadows are quite satisfactory. You've got enough, probably, of those. And this one probably needs a few bits coming out of it. And I think that's probably fine. I don't think we need to do any more to that. we we'll write down here. Um, kangaroo paw. And that's that. So there we are. One kangaroo paw. So far we've got in here, this is our challenge for March, Flowers of the World. We started off with, that was just a test that I did for some paints, which totally ruins the whole book. But anyway, these are the pansies I did that were supposed to be violet. Um, then we've got the blue bonnets, um, which uh, are there. Then the protea. These are things I've never painted before. Edelweiss and kangaroo paw. And tomorrow is going to be Indian paintbrush. Mm, there we are from the USA. So this challenge of um, doing a painting of a flower from around the world each day is for members, really. Everybody can do it, obviously. Um, but I won't be doing these paintings as a video for everybody every day, but every day in the group on Facebook and on Patreon, if you're a YouTube or a Facebook or a Patreon member. Facebook have just started a membership thing, by the way. So if you go to Diane Anton studio on Facebook, you'll find an option to join on there too. So that also gives you um, permission as a member to be in the Facebook group and to receive the videos of each of these and the, and the prompt sheet and everything like this if you want to, to use that. It's all available in the Facebook group, which you can join if you're a member, a supporting member. That, that's not just somebody who subscribes to the YouTube channel. That's an actual paying member of either YouTube, Facebook, or um, Patreon. And it starts at $3 a month. And we're very grateful for that. 
um, support that you give us, and we give you various different um, things in return, one of which is this. So I just wanted to talk about that for a little bit to let you know um, that every month there's a challenge every day. And we try to, uh, basically the idea is if you follow these challenges and try to do as many of them as you can, perhaps using my ideas or using your own, which are often better than mine. Um, but just painting every day is really going to improve your painting skills absolutely incredibly whereas not painting at all really doesn't have the same effect. Funny that, actually, saying that, because it does have some effect if you think about it. If you think about painting, I mean, because I always remember my daughter, she's so funny, um, she had piano lessons and she used to practice in her head playing the piano, and it was almost as effective, at least that's what she told me. I don't need to go to the piano, mummy, and do my practicing on the keyboard because I can just, it just happens in my head. And nobody realized that she wasn't ever practicing on the piano or hardly ever, but she got better each week. It was quite funny, really. I'm not quite sure what that was going on there. Has anyone else had that experience with a child being able to learn without doing it? Yeah, well, anyway, we could talk about that sometime. I'm gonna let you go now and um, hope you enjoyed this. And as I say, tomorrow is Indian Paintbrush, so why don't you join? Why don't you join if you're interested in learning with me Join us on the Facebook group by joining Facebook, Patreon, or YouTube for $3 a month. So I'll see you soon. Bye-bye, everybody, now. Bye-bye. I like that. I have you. That's different, isn't it?